it's not a fluid, the dark energy. We don't know exactly what it is, but we know what it is not. It's not a fluid like water, but it is filled with an equation of state. And it is a space-time fluid, not a traditional fluid that we might otherwise think of. Could our universe be expanding because it is filling with space-time fluid? And could the reason it keeps accelerating be because there are more, quote, faucets opening up? Okay, so Brian, who, who left the spigot on <laughs> in the universe? <laughs> According to my <laughs> wife, it's always me, Neil. <laughs> okay. It's always me. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, actually, the answer is very, uh, the question is very perceptive because essentially the notion of, of the uh, dark energy, which is the responsible party for the accelerating universe, not only is the universe getting bigger every day, the rate at which it's getting bigger is getting bigger every day. Therefore, we have a time derivative of a velocity that's called cosmic acceleration. So we equate that but to- It's called just acceleration ex and it's, ex as applied to the universe, cosmic acceleration. There yes, exactly, uh -huh. right. So, um, so indeed, this substance has a, what's called an equation of state. And that equation of state is a re relationship between uh, an, a substance's pressure, when you try to compress it, Versus its uh, versus its density, how how many uh, ergs per cubic centimeter, how much energy there is per cubic centimeter. So actually, the the flubber like material, it's not a fluid. The dark energy, we don't know exactly what it is, but we know what it is not. It's not a fluid like water. Water has very different pressure density relationships, but it has a strange relationship, which when you try to compress it, it says, oh, okay, great. Instead of resisting it like water would, it says, oh, I love this. Let me suck you in. And it's kind of like an anti-gravitational force. Um, so it's not fluid like water, but it is filled with an equation of state. And if you say it like that, you sound more erudite and you'd be correct. And the answer is yes to this question. Uh, and it is a space-time fluid, not a traditional fluid that we might otherwise think of. Exactly. Okay, there you wow. go. Keep it coming, Matt. Okay, Alejandro uh, Reynoso says, hola from Monterrey, Mexico. And what new discoveries do you think we can get from the BICEP project? project? Ah, so the BICEP project is a project I started way back in 2001. We built a polarimeter, which is a telescope. Wait, first, why, why what, bicep? What, what, what is it? What, so bicep is from? a corny name that I came up with. It stands for Background Imager of Cosmic Extragalactic Polarization. So I said that inflation is not proven, but there is one signal which we would hope to detect, and it's called gravitational radiation, or waves of gravity produced by the violent shaking and shuddering of space-time. Einstein predicts that will cause waves of gravity to percolate throughout the cosmos. So have we found it with LIGO? Are they looking for you? No, LIGO cannot see this. It's way too weak. Because the universe has expanded by a factor of trillions and trillions of times since the inflationary epoch, we can only see it with a, with a microwave telescope to look at the imprints of these waves on the CMB. We're using uh, the CMB, Neil, as the detector. That's uh, so phenomenal. Uh, that. So okay, in so you can't, you, can't, you can't measure A, but you can measure A's effect on B because exactly. you can measure B. Yep, we're putting Ooh, our, our, our detector right at the source. So in 2001, I came up with an experiment with colleagues at Caltech, which we called BICEP, like I said. It's the subject of this book, Losing the Nobel Prize. And that's it right there if you're watching on the uh, on screen. Uh, otherwise, I'm showing a picture of our telescope at the South Pole Antarctica, where I've been twice. We put a telescope there, and we've upgraded it ever since. In 2014... Well, just to be clear, the address of the South Pole is South Pole, comma, Antarctica. Yes. That's what that sounded like. <laughs> or you can send it to <laughs> negative 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees. It actually has a post office, and you actually have a gift shop there. Yeah, negative 90 get... degrees, and any longitude will do, right? Because right. they all converge. All, at the, every direction leads north, exactly at right. At the South Pole. Okay. So, so was it successful? We're still in soundbite mode here. So that was 01. That's 20 years ago. So Yeah. So uh, BICEP made an announcement. 2014, we detected inflation. We detected these waves of gravity. Uh, turned out we detected cosmic dust, particles of dust in our galaxy, not the imprimatur of inflation. Oh, my God. Stuff sitting on our nose in our own right. galaxy. Oh, okay. But BICEP is still flexing away, and so is its, its, uh, its other um, the, the project I lead now with my colleagues called the Simons Observatory, which is uh, going to be the most advanced cosmic microwave background experiment ever. Named after Jim Simons, right? The wealthy That's right. investor. Jim and Marilyn right, Simons. Who's, That's right. Who's very, very into science and math. That's which right. Which is a good thing. Uh, all right, Matt, let's keep going. All right, Ruhan uh, Periacheri asks uh, from the Bay Area says, is it possible that a new universe is born every time another universe dies, say via big rip or bounce? We say multiverse like there are multiple universes existing parallel to us in some higher dimension, but what if that higher dimension is actually time itself? 
Mm. Very good. Yeah. So in fact, there are multiple versions of the multiverse, as kind of the, this question is hinting at. There's a quantum mechanical multiverse. There's a many worlds multiverse. There's cosmological multiverse. But also, there is an alternative to inflation, which avoids the multiverse problem. And that's called a cyclic or bouncing cosmological model, which does feature a universe collapsing, if you will, to create our universe that we see. And there's no reason that couldn't happen multiple times in multiple places um, uh, throughout the universe. So it's exactly correct. All right. All right. You, you're getting I'm better gonna, there, Brian, with your, with your sound bites. Okay. I'm going to combine these two questions because these are two things that I struggle with conceptually. So, uh, but Daniel, again, I want to know uh, who I want to know who asked them too. Oh, I will do absolutely. So da Daniel uh, Kolakowski, uh, sorry, Kolakowski rather, uh, says, if the cosmic microwave uh, background is radiation expanding outward from the Big Bang, how are we, how are we able to see the light here on Earth? Wouldn't the radiation be traveling towards the edges of the universe and thus not visible? Uh, to us thanks for helping me understand this and then okay. also Rob robert weaver from michigan says i understand it's not possible to see beyond our cosmic horizon as light has had not enough time to travel to us if that is true in space and time and space is expanding faster than light are we forever landlocked in regards to the observable universe no matter how fast we go the edge is traveling faster away from us so we never see more than we do now but actually less as time goes on i like the landlocked concept there so i don't know whether those two are connected or not but they felt conceptually connected so i checked yeah. both of you together yeah brian what can you do for us here all right so imagine two observers albert and his evil twin uh and they separate faster than the speed of light as long as they started out closer in distance that such that their light could have when this light was launched from one of the two observers it could have maintained its velocity and trajectory towards the other observer. It doesn't matter how far away that thing is now. We look at when it was emitted, when it was detected, and it doesn't matter where that galaxy is now. So it is true, there is a whole branch of objects in the universe. In fact, I did a calculation for my cosmology class, which I'm going to teach in a few minutes, and that showed that 97% of the universe by volume is causally disconnected, can never communicate, landlocked in the words of your poetic uh, love the audience. I love the reference, yeah. Yeah, so, so that means that, yeah, we can't see those objects. It doesn't mean we couldn't see them in the beginning because in the beginning they were not expanding. They weren't at redshift greater than one, as cosmologists call it. So indeed, they, we can still see them, but we can never access them. And there's a difference between being able to see their original emission and being able to contact them now. So exactly correct. They are isolated from us by mm, cosmological mm, mm. Hor event horizon. Brian, you're doing good here. And then, okay. and then the second part of how can we see uh, the cosmic background radiation if the universe is ex expanding away from us? Yeah, let me let me reword that as I yeah. think I understand it. If the if the if 380,000 years ago all these photons were set free, well, they should be in some way beyond us today, uh, en route to exit the universe or whatever. Why are they still headed towards us? Well, so the photons are traveling towards us, and at the time of their emission, we were physically closer to them. And since that time of emission, the time at which the CMB was formed, the universe expanded by a factor of a thousand times. So a photon would have had been within our cosmic horizon, it would have been access, uh, able to access us, just like any object that's at a redshift greater than one. You could ask that question of any object, the CMB is at a redshift of 1100. So, uh, so the answer is similar to the answer I just gave. It launched the photons such that they will reach us with the exact trajectory just reaching us now, and the, the process of this formation of the CMB was not instantaneous, and we will see, continue to see those photons, but caveat that we won't see them with the wavelength that they were originally emitted. As, as we described earlier in the show. So what you're saying is it was en route to us today from the we, beginning is what yes, you're saying. We were in okay. its future light cone. Exactly. Nice, nice. So it moved not only through space but through time as, of course, correct. these things go. All right, Matt, keep it going. Boy, we're blowing through these. Man. All right, Megan Munoz says, is it possible that space is created in a black hole? I have this weird theory that the matter that goes into a black hole may be torn apart so much that it literally turns to space. And I mean, not only does the object disintegrate, but in the process, more space is created than was originally taken up by the mass. Maybe that's why space expands. That is, the new space could make, that is, if the new space could make it outside of the black hole, can I have a scholarship? Has Megan uh -huh. done enough to, re to get a professorship from one of you? Uh, so, so Brian, if he has any answer other than I don't know, 
Let's ask him when was the last time he visited the inside of a black hole. Okay, go, The Brian. shower, exactly. <laughs> so, right, so I get about uh, 10 letters a week saying, you know, Einstein was wrong, I can prove it, but I'm not good at math, so can you share the Nobel Prize with me? If you're, if you're <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, the answer yeah, you is... You do the math and you figure it out. And right, That's right. right. Mm-hmm. I'll keep the Nobel Prize, thank you. Um, so, no, we, we, we have no evidence for that. It doesn't mean it's not possible. There are people that do predict that time is created when black holes uh, at, at the uh, beyond inside the event horizon, singularity, but we have no way to access it. It is behind the event horizon. So even if it did get produced, like Hawking radiation, we've heard about Hawking radiation undoubtedly, that radiation exists, but it's 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 so impossible, even in, in practice, to envision detecting it. It's all but irrelevant, as is, unfortunately, your new theory. Sorry, scholarship revoked. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> damn. That's, that was a smackdown if I ever heard one. <laughs> At least take me out out for a drink before you ask me for a scholarship. Oh, man.